Welcome to chapter 7. Since we are starting the new chapter, make sure you go to the merchant and grab your treasure map. Now once we have done that, we now want to go behind to where the merchant is located. And you will find two boxes that you can smash. And keep on going behind this building to find your vintage compass. From this point onwards, try to look for any knives and don't use them, we need them for an achievement. And now for our first boot knife. So once we have encounter our first enemy in this location, making sure you kill him to gain the boot knife. Once again, this boot knife is not the only location. There is many throughout this point onwards. And now for the elegant bangle. So basically, once we get to the part with the cannon, we will need to drop down anyway, because this is where the uh, treasure is located. So as you drop down, you may as well shoot the cannon so it raises up to the top. Now in this location here, if you want to, you can shoot some medallions, but I don't do that. I should have done that on the way through. But climb this ladder, then eventually you'll find where a catapult is located. Drop down before opening the door to your right, you will find this treasure right next to another medallion located on your left. Once again, I should have done this, but I didn't until after this achievement. So for the overkill, basically very easy and hopefully you shouldn't miss it if you play this game already. All we need to do is shoot any zealot or any enemy with the cannon and that will be your achievement done. And now time to destroy the blue medallions. So there is six, I do believe, one directly in front, one directly behind you, right next to the cannon. Number three will be downstairs. So once we have shot the cannon up, you should hopefully see the uh, medallion there. Now for number four, if I remember correctly, we're going to shoot the one located on the left side as we climb the ladder up. This will come in handy if you have a sniper rifle, but I don't, so. Number five is located on the wall, hanging above some sort of um, scaffolding up the top. And then your last one should be right next to the treasure that we've already grabbed previously. Once again, I should have done this all before as we're going through, but I, some stupid reason I did not do this. And now once we have made it inside the main castle, we need to use Ash anyway to go across or to the next section. So follow this story progression path until we go through the door when Ashley lets us through. Before going through the crack in the wall where we meant to go, if you head right and go around the back side of the stairway, you will find your elegant perfume bottle. It's open. I owe you one. Now to get the ruby, all we need to do is from the last location, now go through the crack in the wall and look to your left and look up to shoot that little canister to find your ruby. All right, so here we go. If you have been upgrading your combat knife, then good for you. If not, then you may struggle a little bit, just depending if you haven't got enough secondary knives on you. But this boss fight is not that bad. It's not really um, too difficult. Of course, depending on what difficulty setting you're playing on. Of course, if you're on easy mode, then there'll be less knife blows to kill him. In the end, if you're on pro, there's many more. But like I said, it's pretty simple. Just wait for him to go uh, ballistic after you stabbed him. Wait for a little while and then go back in for another attack. Just rinse and repeat until he's dead. And now with the newly found key, we can now go through the doorway. So make sure you bring Ashley with you. Then as soon as you go up these steps and ladder, you should hopefully find your next okay? castle lantern and the uh, spinel. Well, 
I think this is the actual first spill you can find. It's actually always here because it's always random when you hit boxes if you get treasure or not. And also your next castle lantern or bobblehead will be located right here. And now as we figure out the puzzle for the knights, this is quite easy to do. As we go through the doorway, go towards the dead end, you'll find a treasure chest here before we go through the next doorway on your left. All right, time to get the golden hourglass. So now we'll be greeted by the second floor of the um, castle that we've already been down or been into. So if you stay to your right hand side, make sure you kick this ladder because this does come in handy if we need to backtrack for any reason. Now jump across the chandeliers and go to your right, go through the door, drop or something, not through the door, just drop down, grab the hourglass and then we proceed back up that ladder that we kicked down. Oh, my bad. Sorry, there is a yellow herb here. So from the last location, on the right side of the steps, or the far, far right, you will find some cupboards or some drawers. In amongst one of them drawers, you will find your yellow herb. Onwards to chapter 8. So for your first collectible, so once we in the wine cellar, we'll need to fight a shed ton of enemies. Once we've defeated all the enemies, and also in this area there is a red cloak enemy as well, so once you have killed him, go behind where he was located, you will find your first treasure of chapter 8. This will be the mirror with pearls and rubies. And now once we have met an elegant woman, uh, we're also going to grab the elegant clock located in the exact same room. Right next to the fireplace on your left side, right next to many key items that you have to grab. Just a little bit extra, uh, if you want to grab the velvet blue, I believe this is always here. I remember it last time in my playthrough. And now once we've figured out the, uh, the, the next puzzle to get through the next door, we will find a lovely new enemy type. Now once we have seen that, Go to the left side where he came from to find the small key. Now we're going to backtrack now where we found the previous treasure. And then there should be a locked drawer right next to the flub fireplace, sorry, on your right hand side. And now once we have spoken with the merchant, we'll now be greeted by the castle wall. And this will be the first building you'll go into. Now, this isn't really required, but I thought I might show it anyway because it does come in handy so we don't get attacked by the damn troll. But as we go up the steps, we have to figure out this puzzle anyway. Once we have figured it out, look at this doorway. I think you can look at this door before you can figure the puzzle out. But if you look at this doorway, on the right hand side of the other doorway that you can see just barely, got the flames and smoke and that, shoot the chain of that uh, door and then now proceed on as normal. Time for our necklace. So once we're at the castle wall front, I kind of dropped down, I can't proceed back up just yet. So not to worry, this area is unmissable, unless you can glitch through walls or something. But on your main story progression path, you will find this switch that you will need to press. This switch will unlock a doorway located to your right hand side. I went the wrong way. And now proceed back through this path. Now as we climb up, you will find some enemies on your right side as we climb up a bit further. Once you have dealt with them, drop down the hole behind you. As we drop down, once again there will be more enemies here. Before climbing the ladder, we will find your treasure just before we climb up. And now hopefully you guys remember the, the chain we shot to open the doorway. So now we can easily grab these three collectibles here. So as we climb up as normal, go through the doorway, head up the steps. And now originally, if you don't shoot that chain off the door, this door will be closed. So that means you'll need to go up and trigger the troll. And then we need to 
Also, try not to get hit by the troll as we're trying to get these damn things. But since we don't have to do that, we can now climb the ladder freely of no trolls. And then in the middle here, you will find a yellow herb and then also you will find an emerald. Now go down the steps and go right and then you will find your next Castellin. And now as we are fighting the troll now, we're not really fighting as such, just running away, trying to get hit as much. Can't really say much because you need to come through here anyway. But once you drop down, do a 180, then there'll be another switch that we can press very shortly. Once we have pressed this switch, then we want to jump down even further. Then do one another, do another 180. Go into the doorway, and you will find your ruby just hanging on the ceiling there. Luis. Welcome to chapter nine. As soon as we start the chapter, finish a conversation with Luis, and then we'll find our very first yellow herb located in the same room as we start this chapter. Look behind the painting, it's on the windowsill. Now for your next castle in Bobberhead. So as we go into the maze itself, just follow the video and then we'll be greeted by a first aid spray as well. And also a Bobberhead that I've already shot, but I will show you the location. And now as we're proceeding through the maze some more, we will find this lovely statue. Can't really miss it because we need to go past it anyway to activate one of the three flags. So before going to the right hand side, go left. And then we'll find the elegant chessboard located inside this treasure chest. And now once we have done all the three flags and the maze is now finito. Now, since we have Ashley with us, we can now backtrack now to get the depraved idol. All right, guys, hold right there. This is Future Plasma. Before we go any further, we're gonna grab the Rhino Beetle. This will be number two of three. This isn't related to any achievement, but it's also you can give you 10,000 pesos if you sell it. So at chapter nine or 10, or any time during the castle section, you can come back and grab this beetle. So as we go back, be very cautious that the enemy will spawn and try and kill us as we bring Ashley up and over to the secret place. And now once we go back to the maze and go up the stairs and go into the castle even further. So once we're here, there will be some blue medallions that I clearly don't shoot and I should have done. But on the statue to the right hand side, just past the merchant shop, we'll find the next elixirite. Now we're going to destroy the blue medallions. This is number four. So first up, let's go into the merchant. I kind of forget to actually show you to hand them in the quest, but don't worry, since you'll be there quite a bit anyway, so hopefully you shouldn't need it. And also in this same area, there will be another shooting range, so feel free to do whatever you want to do here. I'm not a big fan of the shooting range, so I will try to avoid it as much as possible. Now, as we leave the merchant, go back where we came from. This will be your first medallion. Your next medallion will be located on the chandelier. You can get it from here, but it's a lot easier if you go up to the second floor of this building.
And now right next to where the main key items are located, you will find your third medallion here. And now on the wall, before we go through the door on the left, we're gonna get the pest control now. So there are three rats scattered throughout this mansion. So here's one of them. And now this will be where the snake head is located, the key item. So once we go to the very far back hand side, you will see a curtain that is slightly opened. In between that, you will find your next medallion. Once you've figured out this place and then you'll hand in your snake. Doesn't really matter which one you go first, but if you go up the steps, we're now gonna find our next small key. So go for the doorway on the right. The small key will be located in the drawers on your left. Then this is where Ash is gonna try and hit on us. Now proceeding as normal, we're going to run as normal into the next location. Do not jump down just yet. If you stay to the right hand side, you will find this lovely blue medallion here. And now once we have done the next area, so as we jump down, we defeat all the bad guys. We got the next piece. Uh, this should be the lion head we got. Then in this corridor here, you will find the cubit device and another rat. We need this cubic device because we need to unlock many treasure with it. And now since we have that device now, we're going to grab the butterfly lamp. So go back to where the merchant is located. There will be your first cubic device attachment here that we can figure out and do not really difficult so just figure it out and then unlock the uh, treasure all right now for the gold bar we're now going to backtrack now to the other side of the castle luckily enough there is a monorail going on here so as we sit on here this will take us to the opposite side of the castle where we were before this is like chapter 7 dash chapter 8 Now, as we made it back into the main castle, so where we killed all these guys as well, be careful there is enemies here. Look in the drawer on the right, you will find a small key usage here and a gold bar. Well, since we're here, we may as well get the uh, next statue located just to our left. All right, once we are now going towards the third key item, so once we have grabbed it and killed everyone else, you will come to this witch, all part of the story. This will raise the platform up that we need to do to grab the key item. Now proceed back to where that platform has risen, but don't go onto the top of it. Go underneath and you will find a blue treasure chest containing a yellow diamond. So now in the same location, do a 180, go to the opposite end of this raised platform and in like the, the lounge or very small seating area, you will find the blue medallion. And now as we play as Ashley, once we pick up the bunch of keys, we're going to find our first elegant perfume bottle. We need the bunch of keys because we need to grab the treasures. So once you have counted your very first night, we now want to stay to the left hand side and go directly straight. And now for the sapphire. As we use the elevator, we climb to the top and we get a very short cut scene with Leon down below. Once we get that, Leon? this one will be hidden in amongst the books. So once again, we got to come back here with Leon, but um, with Ashley, we need to find the chest containing our sapphire here. And now once we have gone to the next section, so this is very, very close to the end of Ashley's section, 
So as we trigger the four lights to open the doorway, as we run towards the blue light that the enemies cannot get to you here, before going to the yellow knight that you see in front, go behind the privacy window door things to find your final treasure. On to chapter 10. Welcome to chapter 10. Not sure if this matters or not, but I'm going to show you anyway. So as we have full control now of Leon, in the area that we need to go, we will find the three treasures that we found with Ashley dropped in front of a doorway. So now once we go through the doorway, look on the right hand side, you'll find a, some drawers and on top of that, you will find your next request. So now we're going to go into the area where Ashley was when we played as her. Now as we proceed in, be careful you will get attacked by the knights that are still alive in this section. So as we go through this area, we will find your final rat. So make sure you kill him and that will be your request replete. Making sure you hand these quests in, because I'm pretty sure I don't show you this one. Me handing it in. Now we're going to kill this lovely knight. And now as we go in, we'll see the lovely knights. There'll be three of them. Of course, the gold one we have to kill for the quest. That's it, we're done. So now as we are still in the Ashley section, we now want to go to the library. In the library, go where we found the bunch of keys, located on the upper section here. And this is where we find the CQBR assault rifle. I think this is the only gun I don't really use or haven't used, including the bolt thrower. And now for the golden links. So still in the library, we're now going to leave the library through this doorway. Now the golden links will be located where we saw Leon trapped in that cage. So as Ashley, we were we saw Leon through that little gap there. But in this same section, you will find another cube device thing that we can use to figure out. Now once we're done, there should be a ladder very close by to you. We can climb down for a quicker exit. Now we're going to hand in the quest. I really thought I didn't hand the quest in during a video clip, but apparently I did. So hand them in and we get some more goodies. Got some. Welcome to the ballroom. So once we have defeated all the new enemies in this location, there is quite a lot, but in the middle section during the combat or after, you will find your first collectible in this room. There will be a ruby underneath the rubble. Now for the beetle. Now this will be a path where you need to go anyway. So as we are fighting, you want to come through this progression, but don't go up the ladder just yet to trigger the first doorway. Go behind that ladder to find your beetle. And now feel free to go up that ladder and finish the rest of your stuff. Now, once we drop down into the depths, so basically we get into a throne room, we get a cutscene, we get kicked down into the depth. Once we have gone through the scary water section, we'll be greeted by your first elegant crown. This will be part of the achievement. For selling this 400 rubies, where you call them. Now from the last location, go through the crack in the wall. Once again, you have to do this. Before going up the ladder, grab a yellow herb and then go up the ladder. Now as we go through this uh, tunnel way, we're going to find a your well your next collectible. The red berry, or berry L, where we call it. So we hopefully should hear one of these canisters again creaking around. So make sure you just open your ears and hopefully you'll hear it. Now we're going to make our way now towards the merchant because we need to sell the uh, the treasure we just found, including all the goodies that we have kept, hopefully. I probably kept way too much stuff. So we have to sell the, the elegant crown and make the sell value to 100,000. Basically, that's pretty simple. So once we apply gems, we apply every single gem we see here. So one of each. 
Oh no, sorry, we don't apply all gems. Make sure you apply the yellow and the blue because they're worth more, the red is worth less. And once again, in chapter, I think 12 or 13, we get another eloquent crown and we can do this all over again. So make sure you still keep it if you want an extra 100,000. And by this point, if you really want to sell the rest, the syllable items, I kind of kept them. I don't know why. But anything you can sell, you don't apply gems into, just sell them. In this sewer system here, right behind or the merchant, you will find your next castellan. This is number 10. You don't see it because it's hidden away. All right, this is pretty simple. Well, I'll say simple. If you have a rocket launcher or anything decent on you, then probably best to use it. If you had a rocket launcher, this will make this achievement 10 times easier. But since I didn't want to waste 200,000 just for one shot, we're going to do it the old fashioned way. So there will be these um, like freezer system or coolant systems around, scattered around this one area. There's about five or six of them. And if we use them, they will stun the boss momentarily so we can fire a few shots at him, making it a lot easier to hit him. Now, from my knowledge, I think you can still shoot him as he's running after you, but um, I tend to keep my ammo until he's standing still so it's, I don't miss as much. Finally, some peace and quiet. But once you've done it enough times, he will just die. And now once you kill the monster, you will gain a valuable item. So this is worth about 30 to 40,000. And now as we head back now, so before we get on the elevator, we need to proceed back to the part where we triggered the monster. But we're not going directly back in that same room. But as we proceed back though, in this corridor, there will be a doorway on your right. And you should hopefully, or, or hopefully you should have seen this treasure already. But you can't get it until the boss is dead because the blast door will be opened. So now head down here, grab yellow diamond and then leave to chapter 11. Welcome to chapter 11. As soon as you start, we'll be greeted by the merchant and also a shooting range. In the shooting range as well, just want to point out that if you're like me and haven't really played any of the shooting ranges, once you get to the final shooting range and then you try and play all of them, um, it won't let you. You need to um, play one of each so you got to play 1A, then it unlocks the 2 section, so you got to beat 2, then 3, then 4 to unlock them all. So don't panic if you don't have them all unlocked, because you need to play one of each to unlock them all. So now in the next room, you will find a sapphire once we have pressed the switch, making the drawbridge go down. Now from the same location, you will get ambushed by many enemies. Also, if you want to, before grabbing the golden hourglass, grab the dynamite located to your left in that room. Once we have got the dynamite, go to the right to find the golden hourglass. Now from here, drop down and then proceed on to the next location. So I found this pretty damn easy to do. Give us a push, uh, so make sure you make a manual save before attempting this, because then you can try it every time you fail. So I found the first one is not as bad, but the second one I did have to do a few attempts because I've done a mess up a few times but I'm going to shut my mouth down and let the video play until we get off this next minecart. Come 
this it? Great not. Once we finish the first minecart of two, we're now going to proceed on now to grab the next two collectibles. So head up the steps, we'll be greeted by three enemies. Once we kill them all in this room here, you will find your next bobblehead located here. And now for your next treasure, just outside the doorway on your right. And that'll be your next one. And now for the next minecart, once again, I will be quiet, but this one, it took me a few attempts because um, I messed up. Just a word of advice, um, try to make sure you always have 10 bullets in your gun. But it does come in handy when you need to try and take out the chainsaw guy to stop hitting you because he will be your main issue. Um, if you don't have enough bullets, you, you just can't stun him enough. So make sure you have 10 bullets as much as possible and try to shoot him as much as possible as well. And now for your next challenge or your next request, I should say, this will be the insect hive. So as soon as we spawn after the minecart location, we can get three of these as soon as we start this location. Just to be warned though, if you do happen to shoot them now, you will trigger the bugs a lot quicker. So the first two are located at the very start and then you can move forward a bit before the platform breaks beneath you. And that will be number three. Now we're going to run to the next area now, so where the yellow herb is located. So as we drop down, if you keep looking to your left, you'll see it just before you go inside this very small building. Maybe recommended to have a sniper here, but I didn't really have any snipers yet. I don't tend to use sniper rifles, don't like them. But in this same area, you will find the yellow herb and also you will find the request form here as well if for some reason you need to know that information. And now just proceed on as normal. Do whatever you need to do to proceed on. So once you are gone in the caves once again, once again, you need to proceed through here anyway. You will find a barrel in the very far distance. If you shoot that and then this will break a wall containing your secret bar, which will be a large one too. And now for the final thing, we're going to hand in all the quests for this chapter. Now let's go to chapter 12. Welcome to chapter 12. 
Once again, we'll be greeted by the merchant and just a word of warning, do not go across to the tower just yet because we've got to do a lot of backtracking now. So pick up the uh, Jewel Thief and the Salazar family request from the merchant. Once again, you don't really have to pick these up if you know what to do, but since they're literally right here, we may as well. Now for the next small key located in the same room in a small box. Now, since we have that small key, we can now gain one of the treasures that we are probably not got or probably scared about because I was scared about because I didn't get it yet. But first, let's go to the throne room. So the first time you, we came here, there was a cutscene, so we couldn't do nothing about it. So once we've returned back to the throne room, we will find a gold egg located on the right. So make sure we use our cubit device. Just a word of warning, um, to save you the hassle, do, do not use the gold egg because that will come in handy during the Salazar fight. Just don't do it. If you have any eggs on you right now, like the white egg or the brown, then use that to disfigure the painting. But uh, if for some reason you do not, just sit on the chair and just wait. You, do, you don't have to sit on the chair, just sit down and just wait for the one of the chickens poop out an egg. But luckily enough, I did already have an egg. And of course, as soon as I threw it, one decided to poop one out. Right, we're now going to go a bit back even further. So go through the maze once again. Not really difficult. We just had to have straight. And go back to the other merchant. So right here, there will be a crow's nest containing your scratched emerald. I think it's an emerald. And then you'll need to go to the merchant to sell this to him for the next jewel thief quest. <laughs> well done. You've proven yourself reliable. Well then, what can I this is what I'm I'm not sure if I was the only one, but this treasure here got me worried because I wasn't sure where the hell the small key was for this thing. So now we need to go back even further. So go back to where the castle front or the castle wall was or is where the troll was located. So now as we head back to this section, there will be some lovely new enemies that we can kill. Now in this first building, go to the right hand side, do not climb the ladder, go right again, and this will be where the small key drawer is located. And this will be the beetle. And now once we have now made it across the way, so we're now going to the clock tower. So as soon as you go in here, we will find two treasures, the gold bar and the bubble head. As soon as you just go into the place, be careful, there will be many enemies. Go around the back here to find the gold bar. Now for the castle in number 12, this one's pretty obvious to find, but at the bottom of the clock tower on the right side, under the steps or the stairs, you will find it right here. And now let's go grab our next treasure. So this will be the lecture right. So basically once we climb the stairway up and just keep on going until you get to a dead end. Originally these stairs are blocked off first until we climb the stairway a bit further to get ambushed by a ball. But once again, go to the dead end to find the treasure. Now for the next two treasures. So once we get to the very top, we can press the button that releases the ball if we want to, to kill enemies. Before jumping down, go to the right hand side to find your mirrors with pearls and rubies. Now from here, drop down and you will find another treasure chest located to the left side of the elevator that we need to use to climb to the top. Alright, let's go get this next pesty achievement. So this sounds easy enough, but it also can be quite difficult. So it's recommended to kill the red guys as quick as possible, so you use your most powerful gun to kill him. Now from here, we want to proceed with the lighter guns for the time being. So the way these enemies spawn, they basically, uh, they spawn in like a spiral, so they go to the next best place to jump on top of your platform. So for instance, this right one here, now once you get to a certain point, the enemies will not try to jump from that location, they'll jump from the next point. So the next point for you will be to the left here and to the front of us. Then once again, once you get further up, they will go to the next point. So basically the point now will be to the left of us. 
and then left again. So basically, it's just a spiral up. This is so spiral, but you need to make sure when you get to a certain point of each section, you need to just keep an eye on that section. and Don't worry about anything else. So this part is probably the hardest because it can be quite confusing where they're going to jump from. Basically, just look directly up and you will find a ladder here. But this is the, one of the main points here. But there'll be a shield guy that won't jump down yet, but he will jump on you if you don't kill him quick enough. Reason why I bring up the Magnum. And then the next point will be where red guy spawns. And then there'll be a ladder right next to you on your left. So if for some reason you guys are still struggling with this achievement, I will probably recommend making a separate save and go back to the merchants, sell every weapon apart from the ones you want to use, upgrade, upgrade them as much as you can, and then try again. Also, of course, don't override your save. Make a separate save before attempting. So also, if you're stingy like I am with ammo, I did actually reload my save and kept all the magnum I've used on that achievement. So now I'm back to my full load of ammo again. So once you get outside, you will find the yellow diamond located in that canister. Again, once again, go across these platform very slowly. Don't run or else you'll die. And then go into the merchant room located on your left as you proceed through or over the very destructive floor. And then for your final achievement, we're going to throw a grenade into the man's mouth. So as he spawns, this is the easiest way to do it. Just throw a grenade and then ta-da. 